mean that differences are set aside. You will each live together by appreciating and respecting the differences that you bring to your marriage. We're talking here, I think, about unity rather than sameness. And in that unity, David and Alison will come to new adventures of knowing and loving one another through all the adventures of life. And the basis of the life that they begin today, that we have witnessed here at the steps of the altar at St. James King Street, is love. I may have the gift of prophecy, says St. Paul, and know every hidden truth, I may have faith strong enough to move mountains, but if I have no love, I am nothing. St. Paul is, of course, talking about Christian love, a selfless expression of love which is without condition, without bounds. For Christians, our model of loving, of love-filled living is Jesus himself. Jesus who represents to us the spontaneous love of God. And it is this love which forms the basis of Christian marriage. So David and Alison, God has brought you together and brings you now to the steps of the altar in this place where you have exchanged your solemn vows and pledged yourselves to one another for the rest of your lives. You've done it in the sight of God and in the sight of all these people who have known and loved you for many years. From today, your life will be different. Public celebration of marriage marks your own commitment to one another to live in love and peace together, to nurture and strengthen one another in all the seasons of life, to reach out to one another and to seek always to be reconciled to one another. Marriage is a great adventure. Today, David and Alison embark upon their adventure that will last until they are parted by death. It is, upon, it is an adventure, the launch of which we are privileged to have witnessed today. It is my prayer, and the prayer I'm sure of each one of us, that you, David and Alison, will experience the richness of a deepening and mutual love, and that you may know the blessing and strength of God in the life that now lies before you. May God bless thee, richly bless you both.
God, Abraham and Sarah, bless Alison and David, your servants, and sow the seed of eternal life in their hearts, that whatever they learn in your holy word, they may indeed fulfil. Look in love upon them and bless them, that obeying your will and secure in your protection, they may abide in your love to their lives end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Merciful Lord and Heavenly Father, by whose gracious gift the human race is maintained, give to David and Alison the blessing of children and grant them wisdom and grace to bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. To your, to your praise and honour, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 <clears throat> o God, who by joining man and woman together taught us from the beginning that we should not separate what you have joined as one. We praise you that you have consecrated the state of matrimony to such an excellent purpose that in it it is signifying the spiritual marriage and unity between Christ and his church. Look mercifully on these your servants, that this man may love his wife according to your word, as Christ loved his bride, the church, and gave himself for it, cherishing it as himself. And this woman may her husband, according to your word, be loyal and faithful. O Lord, bless them both, and grant them to inherit your everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus our Lord, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
country where men are men and so fit and the sheep are really nervous and the women are so fashionable and beautiful fit and confident and that makes the men nervous can I first of all say what a lovely church service we have had, we've witnessed today at the marriage of Alison and David. We all must have enjoyed the violin playing, and the individual, and the individual solo performance by our Lady Soprano. Alison and David, I hope that your life in the future is happy, loving, prosperous, and always successful. Yes. Good luck to you both in the future. Woo! I first met Dave in Australia four years ago, when David and Alison had only known each other for about two weeks. And I always remember the comments he made to me then. He took me on one side and said, I'm very fond of Alison. <laughs> I'm sure he still is. <laughs> Joking apart, they do seem made for each other. I remember two significant events in Alison's life other than she was a perpetual student. When she was about two years old, Dina and I took her on a holiday to the island of Guernsey. And we flew in the Britannia four-engine turboprop aircraft. It was a really bad flight. And the, fl the plane was being buffeted about like a toy up and down and from side to side and all the passengers were feeling extremely anxious worried and very sick that's all except Alison who was laughing and screaming with every motion when the plane moved up or down her infectious laughter made everyone relaxed and by the end of the flight 
everyone was laughing too. I'd like to thank Marjorie for editing my speech and keeping it clean. I tell you, I didn't half have a speech, but I'm not quite sure how your Australian state built. <laughs> to all the other people who have helped, I say thank you very much and well done. Now, I would ask you to stand and raise your glasses to give a toast to the bride and groom. Every happiness to Alison and David. Thank you. About 20 years ago, uh, by an old friend of mine, um, we were all working together at the time. I was looking to leave home and Dave had uh, recently bought a flat in Watford. He was a budding rackman and he had a broom closet to rent. 50 quid a week, a real bargain. <laughs> so, never paid on time. <laughs> we, we quickly became friends and um, I became his favourite lodger because, mainly because the other lodgers were completely insane. <laughs> the, the whole flat had a feeling of institution about it. Um, it was mainly due to the fact that Dave got a, a job load of um, lime green paint of British Rail and he painted the whole flat lime green. <laughs> In fact, it was so bad that Dave moved out in the end. <laughs> I think it was probably just for the extra rent money that his room was going to bring, though. So I quickly moved in, a bargain, only 20 quid extra a week, and I, I proceeded to repaint it. <laughs> Back in those days, Dave was, he was a man of few words. Uh, most conversations were pretty one-sided, uh, usually ending with a non-committal, we'll see. And that's, uh, and that's if he even bothered looking up from his newspaper at the time. I remember one day um, a whole group of us jumped into Dave's Cavalier. We were setting out to a party and um, there were so many of us in there we had to double up. And um, his girlfriend at the time was doubled up to the nines and she was sitting on our old friend Julian's lap in the front seat. And Dave just turned over and he said, Julian, hands on the dash. <laughs> 